in me. <laughs> we have all those misconceptions, but you know, such common notions um, do not really properly illustrate the Holy Spirit. The dove can be a symbol of peace, okay, which is good. The Holy Spirit can also be a symbol of peace, pero kulang, that description is lacking because the, it does not show, the dove does not show the power of the Holy Spirit. Diba? Ako, if I were to choose the word of my power, I'll choose an eagle, not a dove. Ano? But the dove does not really show the power of the Holy Spirit. Next, some people also think that the Holy Spirit is a messenger of God. Diba? When Jesus was, uh, was uh, uh, about to go to heaven, some I'm going to leave you an advocate. Diba? This is the Holy Spirit. Some people think, ah, baka ano lang to, messenger lang to bring the good news or a representative of God. But, you know, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God. That's why we Catholics believe in the Holy Trinity. We've got the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Of course, it's very difficult to explain, but that's what we believe in. Three persons in one. I, uh, you know, I have a... Uh, I have three kids right now, because the one is still in school in August. But my daughter, who is very sharp, we're attending mass. She said, Papa, she said, yes, yes, Elise, she said. She said, there's a moment, there's a aha moment. She said, Papa, I just realized we have two gods, God the Father and God and uh, Jesus the Son. She said, how do you explain the whole thing? She said, right? But for her, I uh, appreciate him. But actually, we have another one. You know? God, the Holy Spirit. And if you, some theologians would say, God was the one who created us. Jesus was the one, the same God who saved us. The Holy Spirit is the one who will sanctify us and allow us to live good Christian lives. Okay? So, pag makikita mo yun, there's really some continuity. Okay? These are not just different persons coming in and out. Ano? Is it just one God? sending us the exactly the version that we need okay because we've been all saved tapos na yung jesus as a person in that sense has saved us and okay? has paid the price of our sins but what have, the, the, our major problem now is really living that uh, that christian life not to really be redeemed in the purest sense okay? now in the old testament a good uh, source could be ezekiel it says there I will give you a new heart and a place, a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. The context of this reading is this. The people during that time were just so immersed in sin. Okay? Lifeless. Okay? Uh, when I say lifeless, it doesn't have to be tahimik. Eh? You can be noisy and uh, appear to be happy, but the the day, there's sadness and just lack of life within. Okay? The people were like that. And God assured them that He will give them a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. Okay. The Holy Spirit can do that. Now, if you read further, it says there, I will put my spirit within you to cause you to walk in my ways. Okay. When we are immersed in sin, okay, we are not walking in God's ways. When we are not following God's will, we are not uh, walking in His ways. And it's very difficult to do that without the Holy Spirit helping us. And God basically guaranteed us that He will give us His Spirit. In fact, if you read in the New Testament, if there's one request that the Lord will grant, as, as long as you ask it, it is the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you ask for the Holy Spirit, He will give it to you. I guess the problem with us, if you read through the verse there, you mga ask and you shall receive my mga ganon. Sometimes we take that out of context and substitute from it as anything that we ask. This is not uh, what Jesus was communicating. What he was saying, communicating is, if you ask, whatever you ask in my name, I will give it to you. He was actually talking about the Holy Spirit. So, my pastoral leader in Ligaya, my new community now, he will tell us, you know, if God does not give you the Holy Spirit, you sue God. <laughs> because that's really a guarantee that He said He will give. So you cannot doubt God. You cannot tell, you cannot say that God did not give you the Holy Spirit. Because God Himself 
being the truthful God that He is, told us that He will give us His Holy Spirit. Now, what happens when we receive the Holy Spirit? The first is union with God. The Holy Spirit enables us to experience more of God's presence and love. Through His Holy Spirit, we can receive God's, receive God's counsel, we can hear His voice, we can perceive His mind. Okay. Of course, uh, in the modern days, except for very rare occasions, uh, God does not speak to us directly with uh, the... We need to perceive God's mind. We need to, to... When we hear His voice, we need to perceive what He wants to tell us. And we can do that through, through prayer okay, and through reading scriptures. A couple of, uh, probably six months ago, say in our company, just to give you an example of how my experience of that, you know, when you say union with God, I was faced with a dilemma. Okay? Uh, you know, in our office, we have this unwritten, we are, there are several project managers. What we do is our main bread and butter is that we get a project. So when you get a project, of course, you, do, you, you render the service to your client, and they, the client will pay you. That's basically as simple as that. No? So, in other words, the more projects that you have, the more clients that you have, the greater your income. Okay? Ganun lang. Now, there was, there was this particular project na uh, medyo, mas, medyo hilaw ang dating. It, 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 it actually, uh, initially, was now the, the, uh, a partner of a fellow project manager bid it for it, pero hindi materialized. Then another one, uh, through, uh, through an architect uh, was involved with it, but while we were doing the negotiations, the owner contacted me na ako na yung mag-code. It came to that point. And although kami had an unwritten rule just to preserve our relationship, pag kliyente yan ng isa, pag na, wala, no touch na. Ito yun ang kayaan mo na yan, di ba? Kahit na lumapit mo sa'yo. But honestly, even we had that unwritten rule, the temptation was really there. Kasi parang inisip ko, and I could Honestly, rationalized uh, it, ano, parang, I was saying, eh, yung kliyente naman lumapit sa akin, yung kilala na naman niya, yung arkitekto lang yung kliyente, this is my layer pa. So, gulong-gulong ako naman, and it was, it, it was a big project, no, during the time. Uh, during the time, actually, I was pregnant, but, uh, nakuna kami, ipat ako dun sa, sa bahay na pinatayo ko, I had amortization payments, kaka-baby ako, kailangan ko na lang isa pang kotse, kaya para sa school ng anak yung mga ganun. It was very tempting na parang when the client asked me na, pwede ba mag-quote ka na lang? Kasi mas preferred ka namin kaysa dun sa isa. May mga ganyan ka. At talagang, of course, parang kung isa para akala mo okay, but actually, when you look at it, parang gulo-gulo. And then, there was one morning, I couldn't sleep, ano? That the following morning, I, I, uh, I prayed. And, I couldn't recall the reading exactly, you know, but it was about uh, Jesus' exhorting. The reading was about uh, an exhortation to us to choose the more difficult path. Parang the load less travel type na reading. To choose the more difficult path. And to me, that was very clear. Parang, I was asking God, uh, Lord, speak to me naman about this matter. Tapos pag actually, that was probably my one of my last prayer times with uh, well, the latter part of it. Because prior to that, several days before, I was already praying to God about it. But actually, when God would present to me a reading, na parang hindi ko tayo, ito yung baka, hindi siguro ito. But actually, the Lord already speaking to me a reading. Hindi siguro, baka ito ang first of all reading. But that particular morning, it just hit me, na parang, God has really spoken to me clearly. And I knew that I just had to give it up. So parang, Okay, babay income, babay. Nasa yung nabibira ko yung mga binababay. But uh, at the end of the day, I decided to end it. So that morning, I called up this uh, fellow project man. Sabi ko, ano? Ano na yan? Parang hindi na magulo. Sa'yo na yan. Sabi ko, parang galado yung pasayon na yan. Pero, di ba? Sabi ko, kasabi mo, balik mo sa akin. Kasi din, sa'yo na yan. I gave it. And honestly, I was so at peace. Parang, I just did that. I was happy. And that's what, that's what I'm saying in union with God. No? You can experience God's presence, God's love, and peace. Okay? Which sometimes is mahirap. Mahirap eh. Mahirap kulin yun eh. Mahirap madama yun. We can, we can appear to be 
happy and joyful and everything okay, but deep inside, we're not happy. You cannot sleep. So, yun. Next uh, effect when we receive the Holy Spirit is this. A new nature or spiritual power. New nature or spiritual power. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know if I shared this uh, before, but I'm very active into meeting when I was in the country. There was one water loop. My, my, there was one activity that I, I really shy away from. It's evangelization. I don't know if you do this in Newport, Manila now, but during my time, we do random evangelization. We do that now. Lina, what are you doing? What we do by random evangelization? We go to a mall, okay, we put, we put brothers and sisters from, we just approach anybody. And then we share to him our, our personal testimony. It's talaga, sabi ko, dami ko na naisip na dahilan eh. Kapag uh, ako naman, I'm not really the type na, Una, ayaw ko ngayon akong nilalapitan na magsasalita. At yung dati pag ginanyan ako, tinatakbo ko ngayon o binabastos ko eh. Ngayon nga, gawin ko yung parang. But you know, I would see brothers na nagsabay nga akong brother na nasa galerya, Robinson's galerya kami. Pagsakay namin sa elevator, akala namin sa food court pa lang kami mag-evangelize. Pagsakay na pagsakay namin sa elevator, kinausap na nila yung mag-share. Siyempre ako, hiyagin ako para matalikod ako dun sa atin. Hindi mo kilala yan. So it's really a, it's really a, a water a personal witness. But you know, through the years, after being exposed, I just realized that, ano, na as I said, me needing to do it, I just realized it's really part of being a Christian. And God has really given me the power to do it. In fact, ang pinakamalala ko niyan ngayon, yung when I was building my house, I just went, I had a very terrible contractor. Yung talagang nakakainis na, civil engineer ako. So, bahay ko, hindi ko maayos yung pagpagawa kasi. I do this professionally for other projects. So, gaganda ng mga ginagawa ko building pagdating sa bahay ko. Hindi ko maano yung contractor ko. But anyway, uh, at the end of the day, it was so tempting for me na to just, ano, alam mo yun, yung mag-away na lang kami na gano'n ba? I just heard God telling me na, eh, kaya mo you to approach him, you approach him, you talk to him about your faith, what you want, okay. Lord naman, di ba, wala, wala namang ganyan. Eh, ito nga, sinusupa ko na nga yung contractor na ito. <laughs> Pag nagigising ako, nakikita ko siya, nakikita ko yung mga mali sa bahay. Nakakaya ka lang, tapos kayo, gusto mo ganyan. And, it took me a while, probably three months. Then God, I just heard God say na, bigyan ko na lang ng libro. Kahit yung libro ni Bobby Kitani na, na parang shorter version na si Elke. Huwag ka na magsalita. Magbigay ka na lang ng libro. O ayaw magsalita. So, but even with that instruction, it took me several months, no? Finally, binili ko na. Tapos, in-invite ko siya sa bahay. Then, binigay ko na. Pero, hirap-hirap ako doon. Hindi mo ako nagsalita. Ano pa? Sabi, ay, ito na pala yung bayad. Kasi may mga pretension pa siya. Sinabay ako na libro ko. And you know, when I visit him sa office na ngayon, it's there. So, sabi ko, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being patient with me. I mean, 10 years ago, you cannot even let me do this, ano, yung magsalita sa ibang tao about my faith. But now, you're giving me really the, the power and the courage to do it. Thank you for that. So, when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, we can really have a new spiritual power. That's just one example. A very good example also is um, the power to say no to sin. If you have a favorite sin, lift it up to God. Talaga. Ano, most likely lahat tayo meron eh. It can be a very grave sin or it can be very petty. But meron tayo na kahit anong gawin mo, naglingkod ka lang lahat, inatend mo na lahat ng seminar, naandun pa rin. Diba? Because it's really a day-to-day -day living out. Diba? Simon Samson would say na, hindi ko makalimutan siya sabi niya, na parang in order for him to be faithful to God, For his life to be faithful to God, he just has to, to be faithful day in and day out. Day in and day out, to be faithful. And the same with our sin. Your favorite sin is that, just decide for this day you're not going to do it. Tomorrow, decide again. Okay? Don't plan on a 30-year plan, because I'm sure it's hard to do. Do it on a... Right? That's it. 